Hello everyone, I hope you're all well. My name is Joe, and I'm going to show you how to recreate the iconic keyboard sound for the Who song, Won't Get Fooled Again. Without further ado, let's begin. When you want to recreate any sound, it's a good idea to have a basic understanding of what hardware was used and how it was used. Pete Townsend used a Lowry TBO1 organ, and he ran that through an EMS synthesizer. The Lowry organ is kind of similar to the Vox and the Farthusa organs, in that it is a transistor-based organ. It's not the same as the tone wheels that you would find in a Hammond organ, for example. So, when you're looking for organ sounds to use, stay away from Hammond emulations or anything that says tone wheel. That's not what we're after. We're after that 60s transistor sound. Another thing to note, that tremolo effect people think comes from the synthesizer. However, that was actually a feature that was built into the organ itself. The only thing the synthesizer did was do the filter sweep that you hear in the song. That was it. Everything else was the organ or saturation on the tape, which we'll get into later. For this video, I am using my Roland Phantom 08. However, the hardware isn't as important. What's important is what to look for and how to manipulate the sound to achieve those iconic modulation effects. First, we have to start at the source, which is that original organ tone. This is going to be a combination of a couple different sounds, which is like the real organ. Real organs have multiple stops on them, that allow you to get different combinations of tones, timbres, and that sort of thing. This is the same idea, just with a digital keyboard. The first sound that I found works quite well is this bright 60 sound. Not quite there, but it's a good place to start. What it needs is a little more low-end and fullness. I found a sound such as this complements it very nicely. Check it out. Now we're getting somewhere. It is worth noting, I did detune one of these by a couple cents, like two, three cents. That's just to give it a little bit more fullness with a natural chorus, and it helps give it that analog feel. Remember, this was the early 70s where everything was analog and tape based. So nothing was 100% perfect. The next thing we have to do is add a little bit of overdrive. Not a lot, just a little. This is to simulate that tape distortion that Pete Townsend had. On the original recording, occasionally you can hear the organ distort. That's because Pete was really pushing the signal, which was saturating the tape giving this really nice, pleasing tape distortion. Remember, we're not going for John Lord here. We're just going for a little bit of that natural tape sounding breakup. Now that we have that out of the way, we can get on to the really fun parts that everyone talks about, the modulation. So we want to send our LFO to the filter. We want to make sure we're using a sine wave not sample and hold. There's an interview with Pete Townsend where he says this is sample and hold. That's incorrect. It is in fact a sine wave. Check it out. For 
for reference, this is what sample and hold sounds like. That is what actual sample and hold is. What Pete Townsend's talking about is a sine wave modulating a low pass filter. Add a little bit of resonance. Okay, we're almost there. We just have one more effect, and of course, it's the iconic tremolo effect. Like I said, originally this was actually a feature built into the organ itself. However, you can do it with a synthesizer. Obviously, I'm doing this all with a digital keyboard. You want to set it to a square wave. You want the depth to be all the way up and you want it synced to eighth notes. The tempo of this song is around 135-ish. I have mine set to 135, and it feels correct. We're pretty much right there. There is one extra thing you can do, and that is duplicate the sound and then split your keyboard up and pitch shift your left hand up an octave. So that way, you have two middle C's. Now, why would you do this? Well, organs usually have two, if not more, keyboards or manuals. When you listen to the original recording, there are instances where you can hear a Pete playing the same notes in each hand, one on one keyboard and one on the other keyboard. I don't have a real organ, unfortunately. I can't do that. But what I can do is split the keyboard up like this, pitch shift one hand up an octave, and it basically simulates the same thing. So now, all these things combined together, we now have the iconic won't get fooled again keyboard sound. I hope you found this video helpful. I really love talking about sound design like this. I'm hoping to start doing a little more of that in the future. If you have any ideas or questions about keyboard or guitar stuff, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time.